Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Lunar Lander Explore. I'm Tim and today I'm going to be walking you through some tips on how we find dispersed campsites. So what is dispersed camping? Essentially it's camping anywhere outside of a designated campsite. This usually takes place in national forests or BLM land, Bureau of Land Management. And essentially you're going camping with no reservations, no other campers around ideally, but you also have no services, so no trash, no water, no toilets. You definitely have to be a little more prepared when you're going dispersed camping. So this video is going to focus on how to actually find dispersed campsites. Uh, you don't get to go online and search for them because they're basically just out in nature. You're just going out into the forest and looking for a place to camp. There are rules in terms of where you can camp. It has to be far away enough from any properties, far away enough from the road. So definitely research and make sure you're following all of the local rules and regulations. So let's get started. And we're going to start off in Google Maps, because this is where I always start figuring out where we're going to go. And usually when we're going to go on a camping trip, we only want to drive a few hours. Usually it's for a short weekend. If we're doing a longer trip, we'll go further away. But the time of driving really matters a lot to us for a feasible camping trip. And let's say we're interested in going to El Dorado National Forest. We are leaving from the Bay Area in California, so I'm going to type Oakland, California. And it's going to tell us about how long it's going to take to get to that area. Uh, there is a bit of traffic right now, so keep that in mind, but right now it's about three hours and ten minutes to the El Dorado National Forest area. If I grab this icon and move it around, we can see how long it's going to take to get to other potential areas too. So Tahoe National Forest is about three hours and twenty minutes. Stanislaus National Forest is about three and a half hours. If we were to go all the way to the Eastern Sierras, that would be over five hours. So let's say we've settled on El Dorado National Forest because it's a decent driving distance and it's national forest land, so we can probably disperse camp there. Once we've figured out roughly where we want to go, we'll usually zoom in on the map and look for some interesting features. So when we go camping, we usually want to find either a river, a lake, an overlook, a waterfall, some interesting hike, something to make our trip a little more interesting than just camping. So around here, we can see a big reservoir, another reservoir, we can see Big Hill, we can see a bridge, some waterfalls. Looks like a pretty cool area to go and explore. So as we start to zoom in, we can see these green outlines on the map. And these generally indicate the national forest land. So we know this is El Dorado National Forest. Since we were zoomed out, we can see it here. But as we zoom in, we can see a little bit more detail on where the borders of that forest actually are. That usually indicates where you're allowed to camp versus what is private land where you're not allowed to camp. To confirm that, we always check in Gaia GPS to make sure we know what is private versus what is public land. So over on Gaia GPS, there's a few really cool features here. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but I'm going to show a few of the key features that we use to find dispersed campsites. The first one is this public land layer. And what this lets you see is all the different public land areas, essentially. Is it BLM, Bureau of Land Management land? Is it U.S. Forest Service? And the color on the map will indicate that. So all this dark green you can see is U.S. Forest Service. All of this yellow over here, over in Nevada, uh, this is all Bureau of Land Management. And for the most part, we're always camping in either BLM or Forest Service land, since usually you're allowed to disperse camp in both of those types of areas. So El Dorado National Forest, that reservoir we were looking at, that is right here. And we can see this little outline matches up exactly to what we're seeing in Google Maps. Uh, this is going to show us that this is U.S. Forest Service land, and we can confirm that by clicking into that green area in the background. So we can see right here, this is El Dorado National Forest, it's Forest Service land, and it is federally owned. That usually indicates you can camp there, but we'll show you how to confirm that too. So now that we've figured out this is roughly the area we want to go and explore, the other layer that's really useful is U.S. Forest Service roads and trails. And this basically highlights all the dirt roads, all the forest service roads, and tells you some useful information about them. So let's say we want to follow this road right here and take it all the way to the end on this spot right there. I'm going to click on this road and see what it says. It says this is Kern Cabin Road 12N21. We can see it's open to use for all, so it's, it's open. That means we can go there. It's not closed for maintenance only. And this means we're probably allowed to go and explore it. The other most important thing to check here is the maintenance level, and there's different levels of maintenance. So if it's a paved road, if it's a dirt road, if it's completely unmaintained, there are going to be different levels associated with each of those. And generally these dirt roads are going to be listed as level 2, high clearance vehicles, 
which means you should have at least eight inches of ground clearance. Otherwise, your vehicle might get damaged or stuck going on those roads. So for us, we have well over eight inches of clearance, so this is no problem for us to go and explore. Awesome. So now we've figured out a road we want to go to, the area we want to check out, some potential highlights to add to our trip. And so now we're going to go back to Google Maps and look for some actual potential campsites. So here we are again. I'm going to go into satellite view and find that road that we just looked at, which is right here. So we can see on this dirt road, as soon as you turn off the main road, there's a little turnout. It looks like it could maybe be a campsite, but that's also right next to the main road. So I'm going to keep following this. We can see up here, there's another turnout. Maybe a decent campsite too. Looks like it connects to a little trail that we could either hike or drive down potentially. And as we keep following this, we'll indicate on our map a few other potential campsites that maybe we'll check out while we're driving and stop at one of them. But this particular road, if we keep following it, it goes all the way to a dead end, which is usually really great. That means you're not going to have a lot of traffic coming through and you might have some privacy out there. And if we zoom in here, it looks like a big open area. Looks like a little fire pit potentially in the middle there. I'm guessing this has been used as a campsite many times before. So it looks like a good spot for us to maybe go and check out. So if I'm actually signed into Google Maps, which I'm not right now, uh, I can click on that. I can save that GPS location and then download the map offline. So when we're driving in the area, we have access to our maps, which is super important. So now that we've picked the area, the road, the area that we're going to go check out, it's important to do some research to make sure there's no uh, restrictions in effect, alerts, anything like that in the area. So a quick Google search of El Dorado National Forest Dispersed Camping is going to give us a few things. First, we find this PDF from the Forest Service, and it tells us most of the land of the National Forest is open to camping free of charge, referred to as dispersed camping. Awesome. It's going to tell you your maximum stay limit, 10 days. The water quality it says bring your own water in this case. How to handle human waste. There's no trash service. And of course, as always, leave no trace. Make sure you pick up trash. If you see it out there, try to clean up behind. Make sure we leave the nature as, as good or better than we found it. So that's pretty useful information. We can also go to the main Forest Service page for El Dorado National Forest. And here we'll usually find if there's any other alerts. So right here we can see fire restrictions are in effect. There's a forest order that's limiting fires due to wildfire season out here. Uh, and that's usually the main thing we're looking for is are we allowed to camp there? Are the roads open? Uh, are there fire restrictions in place? So we just found a lot of useful information in just a few short searches here. So that's essentially our process for finding dispersed campsites. Uh, this is a little bit of a different video format than we usually do. So let us know if you found this useful and helpful. If you have any questions or need anything clarified, definitely reach out in the comments. Uh, we love to read the comments that we get on our videos and we respond to every single one. So definitely reach out. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. Helps us out a lot. And continue to follow along as we come out with new videos. Uh, thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video.